What's up guys? I am sitting here in Konak in central Izmir in Turkey. But today we are not talking about Izmir, an amazing city on the Aegean coast. We are talking today about the pros and cons of living in Istanbul, the place I just spent for a month. Come along. The city of Istanbul is beyond amazing. It's bustling, it's historic, it's an amazing place to spend a day, a week, a month, or your entire life. So I'm so happy to share with you the first the pros of what I found that are amazing reasons that you should not only visit Istanbul, but that makes living in Istanbul so special, so enjoyable. So let's get into it. Pro number one is the culture and the history that you find in Istanbul. I don't think that there's a better representation of a city on this planet that has equal or if not as much cultural and historical context that you can like literally see, feel, understand and be a part of every single day. You can walk around Istanbul, you can spend your days under things that are literally thousands of years old. The city streets that people walked on since really the dawn of civilization the places that people went, the stories that people had that still live so vibrantly in Istanbul today. It's an unbelievable city with so much history, so much culture, Turkish, Greek, uh, Romans. I mean, like everybody's been there. I talk a lot how it was part of the Silk Road and the Silk Road trading thing. So you find all of this influence from China, from the Roman Empire, from the different European empires, from the Ottoman Empire, like all living, breathing. It's a part of Istanbul and it's what makes it so unique. It's easily the most historically unique place that I've ever truly been and the place that I feel like you can never get bored exploring living in Istanbul and seeing all the amazing things that lie just underneath the surface. Pro number two is a really important part of living in any city and it's the transportation network of Istanbul. Istanbul is a metropolitan area of nearly 20 million people. Now that means the city is going to be enormous. It's going to be immense. And the question we always have is, what is the transportation network like in big cities? If it doesn't work, it is catastrophic. And if it works, it's amazing. So in Istanbul, they have a really nice integrated network of metros, of trams, and they also have ferries which take you across the Bosporus Strait. Uh, many people know this, but Istanbul is a city that's on the European side and on the Asian side of the continents. And it's split by a strait, a small body of water that connects the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, they manage this not only by a train system that goes underneath or above the, uh, the Bosporus, but they manage it by a network of ferries that takes you from one side to the other. So not only do you get to commute in a beautiful, uh, in a nice way, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you're crossing the Bosporus Strait, one of the most historic places in history by boat. Every day you can see the sunset, you can see the sunrise. I mean, there's so much amazing things to see. So transportation network, big, big, big pro. Next pro on our list comes with the fact that Istanbul is such a diverse place, meaning you get such a diversity of people, of food, and of culture. Uh, there's very few places on the world that you can find such living and breathing history and culture. Istanbul has got it. And now you have a lot of new wave of new immigrants who have come to Istanbul, especially from the Arab world from the Asian world and a lot of Europeans who have come for, for work. So Istanbul is so vibrant, there's so much going on. You can find amazing food from Yemen, from Morocco, from Ethiopia. You can find amazing food from China, from, from Europe, from, you know, you can find tacos too. So you're living in a place that's very Turkish, that has very strong cultural appeal for people interested in Turkish culture, but you also can live in a place where you can have all of this amazing um, diversity and the wealth of people and the wealth of everybody who has come to Istanbul along the way and through time. So if you want to find, you know, like Berlin currywurst, because there's lots, there's a big connection between Berlin, you totally can. If you want to eat in a small cafe that's Turkish, that no one speaks English, you can do that too. Uh, it's really the diversity of Istanbul that I think is such an appeal, which is why it's an amazing place to be an expat and it's an amazing place to visit, to go to, to live in, to just be a part of. Finally, I think maybe one of the biggest pros of Istanbul is that it has a such a diversity of living options and you know it lets you be who you want to be so I lived in Kadikoy which is in the Asian side it's the kind of hipster area they've got good bars they've got cafes it's very westernized feeling people are very free people are very open 
Um, if you don't want to do that, maybe you want to live in a more conservative place, a quieter place, or a place that's more European, a place that looks a little bit more epic, a place that's a little bit more historic. Like, all of these neighborhoods exist in the context of Istanbul. It's really like whatever you want to, uh, to make it. Um, the apartments themselves are a bit older. Um, I noticed when I was living in Vietnam, like everything was new. Like what you got for your money was really good. But uh, of course, Istanbul, you know, uh, you're going to have a little bit of older accommodations, but everything in general is going to be absolutely, you know, geared to whatever you want. There's a neighborhood called Fatu, which is like where a lot of the more conservative Islamic people live, or if you want to live a quieter, more family oriented place. And then there's Kadi Khoi, which is like hip and there's people drinking beer until two in the morning and there's clubs and all this stuff. So it's like whatever you want here. Like it's really whatever goes and it's the diversity of just people, places, things that you can find that makes Istanbul one of the coolest spots on the planet. The last pro on this list for better or for worse, especially worse for the Turkish people, is it is pretty cheap. So um, the lira, the Turkish currency, has been uh, basically depreciating in value over quite a significant amount of time over the last three or four years especially. So what was once three lira to the dollar in 2017 is now 7.8, almost eight lira to the dollar. That means that life has become extremely expensive for Turkish people who want to travel outside of, uh, outside of Europe. But that means if you come to Istanbul and you're making dollars, you're making euros, you're making Chinese RMB, whatever you're making, uh, it's really cheap here. Uh, the only thing that is expensive is going to be the things that they tax, which I'll get in, into the con section. But uh, the value of what you can do here, uh, how much it costs to go on the metro, how much it costs to eat out, how much it costs to do the things that you want to do in your daily life, is pretty cheap. So um, I don't know how long it'll stay like that. I actually hope it doesn't stay like that for that long, because if it's like that, the Turks are not doing well economically. But for the meantime, really, really cheap. Value is awesome. You can do whatever you want at any time. But with the good guys always comes the bad. At Tales from the Road, we try to be subjective. And that means if you like the video, make sure to, you know, like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, we like to tell you real opinions, real stories from real places. And uh, that's our goal. That's what we're doing here. So let's get into the cons. Con number one is in the context of Turkey, it is certainly the most expensive city. So the value that you would get if you're living in Izmir, if you're living in Ankara, the capital city, if you're living in Antalya, which is a southern city that a lot of Russians go, uh, go live in, uh, your value for your money is definitely better. Istanbul is competitive. I mean, there's so many people living in Istanbul. Uh, the prices are higher, the alcohol prices are higher, the cost of living prices are higher. So. Uh, it's something to be aware of if you choose to live in Turkey. Istanbul is going to be the most expensive city by far, no comparison. What comes with con number one kind of goes into con number two. So, uh, the Turks have awful taxes, especially on imported goods. So, unless you're working in Turkey, like you don't have to t typically worry about, you know, like property taxes or taxes on whatever. But there's a big joke amongst Turks. It's like if I buy a car, I buy two for the government. If I buy a bottle of alcohol, I buy one for the government. So it's really true. Um, for example, I was trying to buy a GoPro um, and for example, you pay the European price, whatever, you find it online, but then they, they wanted 150 euros of tax, of import tax on, um, on you know something that should only be taxed maybe $20 or whatever in any other country. So that means getting things here in Turkey that uh, you find abroad is really expensive. Uh, that could be cars, that could be electronics, that could be basically whatever you want it to be. So a lot of Turks try to, um, you know, smuggle stuff in. And there's a there's a there's a new thing where they say they will, uh, if you have a foreign phone and you use a Turkish SIM card, they will actually shut down your uh, your phone service because you're not using a Turkish bot phone. So it's a big issue. Turks really really dislike it. I'm not sure why the government decided that was the way to do it, but. Um, you gotta be aware that that is a thing. So if you want to buy something, maybe go to uh, go to Greece, go to Macedonia, go to Albania, because you're gonna get the prices, and then you can come back. Just don't uh, don't keep the box because they'll open it up in customs and charge you taxes. The next con comes with pretty much any big city, and it's something you experience in uh, all over the world. But it's really bad traffic and really really crowded places. So uh, Istanbul has 20 million people. It's one of the largest metro metropolises on the planet. So uh, traffic at rush hour, being in the metro at rush hour, rush hour is awful. Uh, it's really hard to get around. Taxis are kind of expensive relative to the cost of living. And uh, you just have to be diligent about when you're going places, where you're going places, um, and how to get there efficiently. So if I 
want to cross the Bosporus and then go to a different place. Like, it's going to take me an hour, it's going to take me an hour and a half. Uh, people put up with this, it seems like a thing in any big city that you just get used to. But be aware that like, uh, even though they have a great transportation network, like rush hour is a, is a big impediment, causes gridlock, and can be a problem for sure. Another thing that a lot of people put in the con column, it's not really a big deal for me, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, Turkish people in general don't speak much English. If uh, you're under 30, the chance that a person will speak English is probably like one in three or one in two, at least to some degree. But you know, if you're trying to go shopping, go to the store, if you're trying to buy something, if you need help at a hospital, if you need, if you need anything that requires services, uh, there's probably not gonna be any English translation. There's probably not gonna be any sort of kind of help for you. There's probably, you're gonna have to find someone that you can trust who speaks Turkish, who can help make sure that you're getting exactly what you need and make sure that you're able to access the same things that everyone else is able to access. So if you do call Istanbul home, it's really important to learn some Turkish, some basic phrases, um, and the people really love it when the foreigners speak Turkish. So it's definitely something that I would recommend doing and it's something that I am personally doing. And uh, Turkish is quite challenging to learn. There's a lot of differences with, well, it depends what your back, language background is, but uh, if you speak a European language, it's very different than whatever your language is. So uh, yeah, Turkçe çok zor. That means Turkish is pretty hard, but uh, still we champion on and it's something that you should know when coming to Turkey. That being said, guys, to keep this video short and sweet, those are the biggest pros for me, those are the biggest cons for me, but I am moving to Istanbul. This is my city, this is the best place that I think I have ever lived that maybe feels so much like the kind of person that I am in my heart. It's got the chaos of Asia with the order and a bit of the architecture of Europe. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got the amazing mixture from the east and the west. You feel it every day. It's got amazing history. This city is so incredible. You have to, have to, have to come to Istanbul if you haven't been. And I would definitely recommend it if you're a digital nomad, if you're an expat, if you're looking for your next spot. You definitely cannot miss Istanbul. So, that being said guys, hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, super important to me. Uh, it would be great. Uh, tell your friends, we're making videos here all over the place. Uh, travel help videos, travel guides, and different tours of around the world with food, with culture, with all that good stuff. So, we will see you next time guys. Goroshuruz from Izmir.